This is an introduction to Starry Landscape Stacker version 1.5. I'm going to illustrate it here with some pictures taken by Adam Woodworth. Adam was kind enough to let me use these to test the program and to demonstrate it. There's a link to some of Adam's work at the end of the video and in the comments. Starry Landscape Stacker is a tool for combining a bunch of images collected with a camera locked down in a fixed position on a tripod. Uh, and you're taking pictures of a night sky with stars in it over a landscape. Starry Landscape Stacker reduces the noise in the final image by combining the images together. In order to do that, the first thing it has to do is line up all the stars in the sky. Uh, to do that, it has to know where the sky is. It makes an initial guess by first trying to find stars, and that's where it's put all these red dots. And it's found some stars in the foreground here, so we're going to have to erase those. So we're going to erase red dots. And there's one more over here. And also, it's put some red dots here in uh, these trees here. So let me zoom in on that so you can see that. That was the Z key I hit. I can also use the zoom button here. So let me get rid of those and zoom back out. So that looks pretty good. The red dots uh, are all in the sky. And we can just say now, find sky. And we have a very good mask of the sky. That's good. The next thing we can do is decide which of these images will be the one to which all the other images are aligned. So for example, if we uh, think that this particular star, we really like it when it's in this position or this position relative to the tree or a mountain or a, a steeple, we can choose which uh, that we can align it to. And the way we do is just say align to current image and we'll do that. And now let's uh, zoom back out. We'll use the Z key again. And now we can say align and save. So what it's going to do is going to align all of the images. This just the sky part. It will leave the foregrounds untouched. So uh, uh, because they haven't moved and the camera was fixed so the, the camera hasn't moved lines up the stars, and then it combines them. And in the, uh, version 1.5 of Starry Landscape Stacker, we have four choices about how the images are combined. The default and the mechanism that's been used in earlier versions is median, and that produces a very good result. Uh, median is also, also possible, but typically median is going to give you a better result. Uh, max is useful, and we'll see that in another video. So typically we're going to take median and then uh, we have the option of also uh, saving uh, a copy of the image with the mask in it. So if we have that mask of the sky, if we want to use that in our image processing software to apply adjustments only to the sky, we can save that mask and I have that box checked for now. So now we can say save. It's going to save this. It's going to say it's the median. That's the median filter has been applied. And I've done this before. We'll just replace the previous version. And now we have median with mask and we'll, again I've done it before so we'll replace that. Now something else we might want to do with this uh, image is also get uh, a copy where we have aligned the uh, stars in the foreground and there's a video illustrating how to do that. One thing that is important to keep in mind is that we want to preserve the image that we're aligning with. So here we've aligned with 1135 when we, for the sky. When we align the foreground, we're going to want to align it with the same image uh, so that the stars in the sky are lined up with the stars in the foreground. But let's look at a, uh, a different image. Let me go and grab something else. Let me go down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select bunch of lights and a flat. I'm also going to check this checkbox here, display the image classification table. I'm going to say open. So we have a lot of images. I hope I got the right images. Okay, so this is, table shows us how the images have automatically been classified. And we can check here to see that things have been classified correctly. And I had one flat and a whole bunch of lights, and that's good. But 
with this tool, we can also change things if there has been uh, errors in the classification. So uh, you can check individual images, or you can do a whole column by clicking on the column heading. Let's go back down to the bottom because this last one, is, I know that's a flat. So there. Um, and now I can continue. It's going to load in 24 light frames and a flat frame, flat field frame. The flat field frame in this case is going to uh, deal with uh, vignetting around the edges and it will do a very good job of that. Uh, and now looking at this, we're going to get rid of this red dot there. Uh, we're going to paint some red dots across the foreground here. The sky is pretty bright, so it's difficult uh, to get um, a good uh, automatic detection of stars to get us started here, but that's, that's not too bad. So then we're going to change to painting sky. I'm going to use the S key to do that. I could have come over here and used the radio buttons and fill in some of these holes here. And that looks okay. Oh, there's a problem down here. G key for ground. Okay. And I'm going to, I don't care about how these get aligned. There's nothing special that I want uh, uh, lined up with uh, some star in the sky. So we can skip align with. We're just going to say align and save. I'll take a while here because there's a lot of images to align. But what I want to show you when we get done here is the reason for having the choice uh, between mean, median, max, and min uh, in our, uh, when we go to save, which is, we get to choose which algorithm was used to combine the images. Okay, we're almost done. It's compositing the images together. It's compositing them four different ways. And we'll get to choose among those four compositions in just a moment. Okay, uh, the last one I was looking at was Max. So what we see here is we've taken the brightest pixel from all of the images. And we can see this satellite very clearly here. We can also switch to median, which is a default. We have a very good representation of the sky, low noise and no satellite. So what we do, uncheck this, we don't need the mask, it's not very interesting. We save the median and then we select max and we save max. And then we combine those two images in Photoshop and we can get an image that looks like this. So I have down at the bottom here stacked the max and the uh, median. I've applied some curves to make the, uh, the max match the, approximate the brightness of, of the median result and some color balance because the color didn't line up quite right either. And then I, somewhere in here, is a mask that I used, here it is, to expose just the satellite from the max image and the rest of the image is the median. So the overall effect is very low noise, but the satellite is very visible. And the way we do that is by taking the max, saving both the max and the median, or perhaps the mean if you prefer, and then combining them with, in this case I used Photoshop, but uh, any good image editing software will let you um, uh, do this. I want to show one more new feature of uh, Starry Landscape Stacker version 1.5. This can be useful at times. Hit a line and save. You can cancel that. It used to be you couldn't cancel that. Okay, that's Starry Landscape Stacker version 1.5.